and health works the most common treatment of cancer comes with severe side effects but what if a vaccine could replace chemotherapy dr vernon sondak with the moffitt cancer center joins us now to talk more about it good morning thank you for taking time to talk to us today Happy to do so, thank you. All right, let's catch everybody up to date real quickly. A cancer vaccine is nearing phase three trials. That's the final before getting FDA approval. Can you tell us how it works? Because we know chemo attacks all cells, so healthy and cancerous ones, but this would be a lot different? Yes, it would. And of course, um, we've known for a long time that the immune system could sometimes be harnessed to attack a person's cancer. Why it doesn't do it naturally, we don't know that cancer has suppressive mechanisms of itself of its own so we have to do something to boost the immune system we now have very powerful immune stimulating drugs that are widely being used and because of that vaccines fell into the shadows we weren't using vaccines at all they they hadn't panned out but there's a whole lot of new vaccine technologies that are very very interesting some of them were involve the same mRNA technology that the um, COVID vaccines have used, and those are also in phase three testing along with immune stimulating drugs. The newer vaccine that you're talking about that's being tested in California and some other places, we're not involved directly in that testing, is taking a person's own cancer, chopping it up, and using new technologies, but not mRNA technology, to um, create a much more immune stimulating vaccine mm -hmm. in hopes that the immune system could recognize it without any other stimulating drugs. And that's it's, what's so important for people to realize that this isn't just a vaccine that everybody would get and you never get cancer. It's once you have cancer and then it becomes exactly. your treatment. Right now, I understand it has only been studied on melanoma patients that can be a, a, a terminal illness if not caught in time. What has the success rate been in the phase two trial so far? So in the, in the phase two trial, it was used in people who have melanoma at a fairly advanced stage, but who had successfully had surgery, but with a high risk of relapse of the cancer coming back. And there was a strong signal that at least some preparation, some formulas of the vaccine, not all of them, but the ones that they're testing and moving into phase three could potentially delay the cancer's recurrence. Today, we can use drugs that have a fair amount of side effects to do that, not chemo, mm -hmm. but immune stimulating drugs. These results were obtained without those drugs. And someday, the best approach might be using vaccines and the immune stimulating mm -hmm. drugs together. Well, we know that the current cancer treatment can make somebody feel so terribly sick. There are awful side effects, losing hair, things that are really tough on the mental health as well. What side effects have been reported with this vaccine? This vaccine and ones like it have the same kind of, back of side effects you'd expect if you got the flu shot, a sore arm for a little while, feeling poorly for a day or two, maybe having to take some Tylenol or something like that. These are not the kind of side effects anyone would associate with chemotherapy mm -hmm. or other forms of, uh, of cancer treatment. And that, of course, has been the holy grail of vaccine treatments, why we've been interested in them, uh, because the side effects are just so much less than other more toxic treatments. I tell you what, and it just almost sounds too good to be true. So I have to ask you, will it be financial? Do you feel like if this gets approved, will it even be covered by insurance companies? So I think that's why phase three trials are so important, right? Uh, everyone sort of says, give me that vaccine. I just want to try it, give it to me. But there has to be a justification. There has to not only be proof that it works, but proof that we know how much it costs and how much it, it, it to pay for and, and that insurance companies will actually save money because mm -hmm. if, you, if your cancer doesn't come back, they don't have to pay for those expensive treatments. Right. So this kind of approach can be cost effective, but we can't skip any, skip any steps. We have to prove vaccines really do work 
with our more modern technology. We'll be, we'll be watching that journey very closely. Dr. Sondak with the Moffitt Cancer Center. Thank you for taking time to walk us through all this. It's fascinating and it makes the future seem really bright to fight this awful disease. Yes, it is. Thank you very much.